Dr. Susan always says, no, doctors can't heal, only God heals. What doctors can do is we can manage. But what struck me was what you said about you know, evaluating, testing the body, examining the body, using MRIs to see the condition of the body, whether things are normal, or maybe I use the word right or wrong. And this kind of ties back with what we said earlier about righteousness. Are we righteous? If we are righteous with God's righteousness, then we are right. If we're right with God because of God's righteousness, then God is for us and not against us. If God is for us, how can a sickness persist? How can it stay if God is for us? He will destroy it and obliterate it because God is for us. So in the same way as a doctor examines a body to find out whether it's right or wrong, we want to be right with God. We want to have righteousness. The only thing is we don't want it to be our own righteousness. We want it to be God's righteousness. Romans 5, 19. For through one man's disobedience, that's Adam, many were made sinners. Even so, through the obedience of the one, capital O and E, the many will be made righteous. Whose obedience? The obedience of the one, Jesus. So it is the obedience of the one that makes us righteous because the righteousness that we get is not ours, it is his. So this is very important. Let's go into Romans 6, 16 because this always comes up. It says here, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. So when we read this, we think, oh gosh, if I am obedient to sin, it's going to bring in death. I'm going to lose this battle with the sickness. But if I'm obedient to God, it will bring in righteousness and counter death. We think it is our doing. Unfortunately, that concept opposes Galatians 3, 5, which we read right in the beginning, which is we don't receive the miracles by these works of the law. The problem here is when it says in Romans 6, 16, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or obedience, to, which leads to righteousness, Romans 6, 16 is after Romans 5, 19. Let's go back to Romans 5, 19 and tie it together. Romans 5, 19. Through one man's disobedience, Adam, many became sinners. Actually, everyone became sinners. Even so, through the obedience of the one, Jesus, many will be made righteous. So the obedience that Romans 6, 16 is talking about is not our obedience. It is the obedience of Jesus. Because we trust in God's work in saving us, we trust in obedience of Jesus, that obedience credits us with righteousness. So it is not our obedience through the works of the law per se. It's turning away from self-occupation to Jesus' occupation. Let's just look at a few scriptures to see what the obedience of the one, Jesus, really means. Okay, so in Philippians 2.6 to 2.8, it says this, Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a slave or bondservant, and coming in the likeness of man. So God became man. And being found in appearance as a man, Jesus humbled himself and it became obedient. Here's the word, obedient. To the point of death, even the death on a cross. Do you see it? Who's obedience? Is it ours that matters or is it Jesus' obedience? Even to death on a cross that matters. Because of Jesus' obedience, the whole world has changed upside down, so to speak, for us. No longer is God angry at us. No longer is sickness going to reign. No, God is for us, and the curse that came through the fall of man is reversed. We started again with Galatians 3, 5. We went to 3, 6. I want to read to you just a few verses below that. So again, 3, 5 said, I say again, does God give you his spirit and works miracles among you by the works of the law or by your believing in what you heard? So also Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Then it goes on, it says, verse 10, for all, Galatians 3, verse 10, very important. For all who rely on the works of the law are under the curse. As is written, curses anyone who does not continue to do everything that is written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified because the righteous will live by faith and the law is not based on faith. We were saying that obedience, it matters, but it is not technically our obedience, so to speak. And I'll come, I'll touch on that in a second, but it is the obedience of Jesus, which it says he obeyed even to the point of death, even death on the cross. That is what differentiates uh, everything. It changes everything. Once we believe and obey that or, or put ourselves under the, that obedience, then God is for us. He credits us with, with righteousness of God. The enemy, our enemies become his enemies. And those include every sickness, tumors of every kind. How do I know this? Well, because in Deuteronomy verse 28, it actually defines what the curse of the law is. It says, if you don't diligently obey and do all these commandments of God, that's the works of the law once again, it says you're going to be cursed in the city, cursed in the country, cursed when you go in, cursed when you go out. And these curses shall come. Tumors, fever, inflammation, mental health, skin conditions, knee and leg ailments, and it goes on and on. These are the curse of the law. And 
it says not only the things which are named, but it says in every other disease, not even named, it comes upon you. So every sickness is included. This is the curse of the law. How do we come under this curse? When we put ourselves under the works of the law. That's why we don't want to put ourselves under the works of the law. We want to put ourselves under the hearing of faith, hearing that God is for us, hearing that someone else was obedient even to the point of death. That someone else's obedience is what transforms us. Some of us think that I'm not worthy. I have too many sins. God died for us when we were yet sinners. So we didn't do anything. We were already in sin. And yet Jesus came and died for us. So sin is not the obstacle. It is our unbelief in the goodness of God that's the obstacle. And just to show you, when Jesus was walking in Israel, he healed many people. Was every single one of those people sinless, devout, very faithful? Faithful? No. There was an incident in Luke 17, 11, where he found 10 lepers. And these 10 lepers approached him for healing. 10. And he healed all 10. After the healing, they took off. And one came back to thank Jesus. And Jesus was astounded. He said, hey, weren't there 10? Where are the other nine? Where did they go to? See, nine didn't even bother to go back to thank the healer. Yet all 10 received healing. This is the goodness of God. It is the goodness of God that causes us to change ourselves, change ourselves toward him, away from our ourself towards him. In John 5, 5, there was a man who was infirmed for 38 years. He was lying by a pool and he couldn't be healed. He was paraplegic. And Jesus said, hey, do you want me to heal you? And, and Jesus healed him and said, take up your, your bed and walk. Now, what's interesting about this account is later on, Jesus met, meets this man again. And he says, sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. Did you hear that? Sin no more. So when Jesus met the man, was he sinning no more? No, he was still sinning, obviously. Otherwise, Jesus would say, why would he say sin no more? So this man was a sinner, yet he was healed. And then Jesus says, don't sin anymore because worse things will come. So stop. So here's an example of someone that clearly was in sin or had sin. And yet it did not disqualify him from the healing. How much more us? We are the same. We are not disqualified by our undeservedness. On the contrary, our undeservedness, our disqualification qualifies us because grace is only meant for those who don't qualify. If you qualify, that's not called grace. That's called reward. Do you want reward or do you want grace? You pick. You know, I pick grace. And that's the amazing thing is the more disqualified technically, the more grace there is. God is full of grace. Switch to Romans 10, 16. This is really uh, exciting stuff now. It says, For they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? I asked the question earlier, does obedience matter? And I said, yes. The obedience matters. It is the obedience of Jesus to the point of death that credits us with healing and with righteousness. Here in Romans 10, 16, it says, they have not obeyed the gospel. So our obedience matters as well. But in what way? It says, obey the gospel. How does one obey the gospel? Is it by, again, doing all these commandments and these things? Or is it, actually it's explained right here. It says, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So obedience to the gospel for us is obeying the report of God. What is this report? Isaiah 53, it's the most amazing scripture there is. It says, who has believed our report? It's quoting from Isaiah 53 verse 1. Who has believed our report? God speaking. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And it talks about Jesus. He shall grow up grow up before him as a tender plant, as a out of a root of a dry ground, he's going to be bruised and he's going to be beaten. He's going to be cursed with our curses. And it says, he's a man of sorrows acquainted with sicknesses. In the, in the Hebrew, koli'i, it means sickness. I know some of your Bibles may say grief, but in the Hebrew, it's sickness. When was Jesus sick? Did he ever have a flu, a cold? Never, never, until he went to the cross. The moment he went to the cross, every one of our sins, every sickness imaginable hit him. That's why he was so distorted. You couldn't even recognize that he was a human being anymore. He was just disfigured. It says the chastisement or the punishment for our peace was put upon him. And in Hebrew, the word peace is shalom. And if you ask any person in Israel, shalom means wholeness, completeness, health, welfare. So our welfare, our health was given to us because Jesus was punished. So Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And what is this hearing? It is that Jesus took our infirmities. He took our sins. He credited us with his obedience, his righteousness. And now we end with Galatians 3, 5 once again. Does God who supplied the spirit to you and works of miracles, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Now we know it is through hearing about the goodness of God, about the work that Jesus has completed for us as we believe 
believe in His goodness, God calls us righteous. God then stands on our side. He's for us. He's not against us. And then all our enemies have to run away because God is behind us. Thank you all. See you later.